My name is uh, Professor Hashim Ahmed. I'm a consultant urologist at Imperial College London and the Cromwell Hospital. Um, I've been a consultant urologist for almost 10 years now, and I'm also the chair of the National Cancer Research Institute's Prostate Research Group. Uh, I have a large program of research and clinical activity, so I spend half my time doing uh, research into improving the way we diagnose and treat prostate cancer. And many of my trials have led to pivotal changes in the way we diagnose and treat prostate cancer so that we cause less harm and retain the benefits for men who um, are diagnosed with prostate cancer. My practice in clinical care involves seeing men who are referred with an elevated PSA or an abnormal rectal examination, and then carrying out the MRI and the biopsies in order to diagnose prostate cancer better. And once they are diagnosed, I have one of the largest international practices in focal therapy using both high intensity focused ultrasound, HIFU, and cryotherapy to treat those men whose cancer hasn't spread outside of the prostate and who want to have an option for treatment, which is less morbid, less side effects, less complications, but whilst retaining the benefit of cancer control. When a man is diagnosed with prostate cancer, which hasn't spread beyond the prostate capsule, they're faced with a number of options. And it's quite perplexing, it's quite confusing. It can be quite difficult to make a decision about what treatment they would want to have. There are a number of options, particularly for those men who have medium risk and low risk prostate cancer that they need to consider. Firstly, surgery or radiotherapy, both of which treat the whole prostate. So even if you have a tiny little lesion in one area of the prostate, surgery would remove the entire prostate, radiotherapy would apply X-radiation to the entire prostate. Now those are good treatments, but because they treat the whole prostate, they can cause collateral tissue damage. And so one alternative, and it's now a really good alternative, is to use focal therapy. And I'll be talking about high intensity focused ultrasound or HIFU to treat just the areas of cancer. We can use HIFU and cryotherapy to treat those areas of cancer. And the reason we use one or the other really depends on the individual circumstances of patients. So why is HIFU focal therapy important? First of all, it's a day case treatment. So most men go home the same day or at the very most stay overnight if the treatment is done uh, late in the evening. Secondly, the recovery is much quicker. So whilst after surgery and radiotherapy it can take weeks and sometimes even months to recover and get back to normal non-strenuous activities, with focal therapy using HIFU, the return back to normal activities is much quicker, within two or three weeks in the majority of patients. So lastly, the side effects of focal HIFU treatment are much lower. When you carry out surgery or radiotherapy to the whole prostate, the risk of incontinence and erection problems is pretty high. So the risk of urinary problems, often leading to men needing to wear pads on a daily basis, is anywhere between 10 and 20%. Put another way, there's a one in 10 to one in five chance that you will have long-term urinary problems often requiring pads. Other symptoms include frequency, rushing to the toilet, getting up at night. With surgery and radiotherapy, you can also get erectile dysfunction. Now, this is a really important function for quality of life for men and their partners. And often urologists and oncologists can be quite dismissive of it, but it's really important. It's important for you, it's important for me, that I try my best to preserve that function in those men where they would like to have as least impact on that as possible. 
So if you have surgery or radiotherapy, the risk of erection problems is on average 30 to 70%. And those are long-term rates. And those are rates of dysfunction despite taking tablets like Viagra. With radiotherapy, sometimes the radiation can spill over to the back passage. And so particularly with radiotherapy, about five to 15% of men can get back passage symptoms like bleeding or rushing to pass motions or loose stools or discomfort. And often these symptoms need to be investigated just to make sure that there isn't something else going on with the bowels. With surgery, those kind of symptoms don't tend to happen. So now how does that compare with focal hypho treatment? If we treat just one area, it makes intuitive sense that we're causing less damage. So we're not going to cause as much nerve damage or muscle damage or back passage damage. We're not going to affect the water passage as much as radical whole gland treatments. So on average, the chance that you will have long-term urinary leakage leading to pad usage is about 1%. The long-term risk of erection problems is not 30 to 70%, but it's about five to 15%. The recovery depends on how good your function was beforehand. So if you've got good function with your erectile sexual function now, then after treatment, you're going to be closer to 5%. If it's not so good at the moment, you're needing to use Viagra or other types of tablets, then your erectile function risk is going to be closer to the 15 to 20% range. About a quarter of men do need to use tablets after focal hyphen, but very few need to use anything more invasive. The other advantage on the sexual side effect front is that about half the men, because we're not affecting the tube that delivers fluid when you orgasm, about half the men will actually retain the ability to have ejaculation and will be able to conceive naturally. And that function is very important for a lot of men. And back passage problems like surgery are very rare. Uh, you might get some discomfort early on, but not long-term. And the risk of long-term back passage damage is about one in that, a thousand. So how does focal hypho treatment fare when it comes to cancer control? If you asked me this five years ago, then I would have said we are limited in terms of the data to about four or five years follow-up. But we now have follow-up, which is on average seven years and between six and 10 years. So we now have really good data showing that this is an effective treatment. Unfortunately, like any cancer and any cancer treatment, some men will unfortunately have a recurrence. And that's the case with surgery and radiotherapy. So let me set the scene. Radiotherapy and surgery fail or have a recurrence in about 15 to 20% of cases. So you can remove the prostate in its entirety and you can still unfortunately have a risk of recurrence afterwards and you would then need radiotherapy. If you have radiotherapy, some of the cells are resistant to the X radiation and you can have a recurrence in about 15 to 20% again. And if you have a recurrence after radiotherapy, you would need either medication like hormones or you would need to consider the high floor cryotherapy to the prostate because surgery after radiotherapy is really tough. So after focal HIFU treatment, we know that about 15 to 20% of men need another HIFU treatment to the same area. And most men sign up to what I call two sessions of HIFU. So most of the time we can get rid of the cancer with one session of HIFU, but about one in five need to have another session of HIFU within five or six years. And that we have shown in our studies 
adds very little in terms of the side effects of urinary problems or erectile dysfunction. Overall, about 5% of men still unfortunately have a recurrence because two HIFUs haven't worked and they need to then consider surgery or radiotherapy, both of which are feasible. So you don't burn your bridges by having focal HIFU treatment. You can still have surgery. It will be a bit more stuck down where we did the high food, but the rest of the prostate, because we didn't treat the rest of the prostate, is fairly pristine. And so good surgeons are able to remove prostates after high food with no significant issues. And the data shows that the side effects um, are no different in terms of urinary problems, but us higher with uh, erectile dysfunction if you have surgery after high food. But that might be years down the line. You can have radiotherapy, and radiotherapy seems not to be any different uh, in, in applying it after focal high food treatment compared to applying it straight up front. And the survival from prostate cancer is close to 100%. It is with surgery and radiotherapy too, but so far in our follow-up of seven years average, which means lots of men have reached well over 10 years as well, the survival from prostate cancer is near 100%. And that's really reassuring. So if you're newly diagnosed with prostate cancer, how do you know you are suitable for focal therapy or high food treatment? Firstly, you have to have localized prostate cancer. In other words, it can't have spread beyond the prostate. Secondly, your PSA should be less than 20. If your prostate gland is very big, then that might be a reason why your PSA is 25 or 30. And that sort of nuance will need to be discussed with somebody like myself who does focal therapy. Thirdly, the grade of the cancer, how aggressive the cancer cells look under a microscope, what you may have heard called the Gleason grading system, should be seven or six. So three plus three equals six, three plus four equals seven, or four plus three equals seven. That should be the overall grading. And lastly, because we're treating one area of the prostate, you must have one area of the prostate involved. Uh, and this is quite important. The majority of men will have one main area, what we call the index lesion. And that's the cancer that drives the progression of the disease. That's the area that if you left alone, would start to grow, progress and spread. And that's the area we need to knock out. Some men have tiny low risk areas in other parts of the prostate, including that main index lesion. And in those men, we can still do focal therapy. What we would effectively ask you to consider is for us to knock out the main lesion and then monitor with active surveillance the rest of the prostate, which might have two, three or four millimeters of Gleason 6 cancer. And the reason for doing that is because we know those areas of low risk disease are very suitable for active surveillance. The vast majority do not change, do not grow, do not progress. And therefore, there's no reason to attack every little bit of disease. Because the more tissue you treat, the more side effects you have. And the whole point of doing focal therapy is to reduce the impact of treatment. But you might ask, well, what happens to the untreated tissue? Is there a greater chance of me developing new cancers? And again, in our data, we have shown that no more than 4% of men develop new areas of cancer which need to be treated. And whilst that's always disappointing, it tends to be picked up very early. We can often do focal therapy to that area as well, if you wish, but certainly you can have surgery or radiotherapy. 
And so that rate is actually quite low. So again, reassuringly low. In the past, people were very concerned that the untreated prostate might start to develop lots of cancers. And this has not been borne out by the fact. So finally, thank you for listening to me. Um, I hope everything that I've said is clear, but if you wish to find out more information, please do get in touch. Um, I'm very happy to carry out a consultation to go through the more nuanced details of individual cases. And if you are diagnosed with uh, prostate cancer, please don't worry. It is generally a slow growing disease and the treatments that are available out there are really good. And certainly with focal HIFU, if you are eligible, you can have a treatment that's effective with a much lower risk of side effects.